Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode for the Financial Freedom Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. I'm really excited about today's guest, Manoj Agarwal, and <clears throat> he dubs himself as a global thought leader in AI who made Obama and Bill Gates take notice. Really interesting. And you'll hear about his story. You'll hear about his classic entrepreneur story, and we'll talk about how AI and its pros, cons, and how it's going to change the world. So, um, Manuj, welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Excited to be here. Um, we connected through Podmatch, and tell people about your backstory and how you got started, and we'll go from there. Yeah. Well, um, my journey started in India. I started as a, a factory worker at age 15, and uh, I was making $2 a day. Basically, that experience uh, inspired me to look for more in life, uh, something to create uh, more impact and obviously increase my value in the world. And that led me to technology, software, um, computers. Um, that became my passion, uh, using technology to solve big problems. And uh, that skill has taken me to many places around the world, uh, you know, working with uh, many thought leaders, many Fortune 500 companies. Uh, now, yeah, I'm, I'm talking to you. So that's a journey in very short period. Yeah, I love I love that. And um so yeah, and basically you're um you're basically the modern American success stories. And um so one thing is talking about um uh, this AI. So AI is like the new hype. You know, last year was blockchain and crypto and you know, but now it's AI. So um what's curious is uh, you know, is this hype, is it overrated? Uh tell us more about your thoughts. Yes. See, the interesting thing is that AI has been around since the 70s. So this is not new. Uh, even if we look around ourselves, we are all already surrounded by AI. So, you know, the if we take out our smartphone, every app on that uh, device is controlled by AI. Um, you know, this video recording we are doing through Zoom, the traffic behind the scenes, the internet traffic is being optimized by AI. Uh, when we buy something on Amazon, I mean, Amazon is all about AI. So this uh, notion that AI is new is, is, is a misconception. But what actually happened was that uh, with ChatGPT being released in 2022, now everyday people, people with the non-technical background or people who are not into, you know, um, these kind of latest technologies, they can easily use AI for their own life and business. And that is where the excitement has built up because now, whereas only few people were able to utilize AI, now with chat GPT, everyone is able to use AI. So, so, it's, so that's, a, yeah, so that's the thing. But hype, I don't think this is hype because, you know, this is not something new. It has already sort of shaped our lives in, in ways. And now I think it's the next expansion, if you will, of that same technology, because now it is democratized and everybody can use it. So it sounds like it's a iPhone moment, like basically um, something that was confined to government defense, and, you know, labs, academics. Now it's for the mainstream. One thing is, you know, I've been following the video and the video is really interesting because it's the, it's like it's GPU. So there's this this interesting thing with technology. It's like usually people, it's like it was like the internet. It was like it was like uh, Bitcoin. It was like you know blockchain. All of these things where it's basically it's like hype and speculation, then bust, then real building, and then you start to see like the real thing. So is this what we're seeing with AI now, or is it like is it kind of mixed? Um, what are some applications? See, um, so I think. We have gone through the bus uh, cycle and uh, sort of resurrection of AI. Uh, I'll give you certain examples to prove that because if we look around, the richest people in the world, they have become the richest people in approximately last two decades, just two decades, right? So Elon Musk, he uh, accumulated all his wealth uh, after the year 2000. 
right? So now uh, how did he di uh, do it? So if you look at his companies, main, main two holdings, Tesla and uh, SpaceX, they're all based on AI, all data, right? So that's how uh, smart the, the electric vehicle, Tesla vehicle is, like it's all AI, it's all data. Same thing with the, his SpaceX rockets, right? Uh, if you look at Jeff Bezos, he also accumulated all his wealth in the last two decades. And Amazon is all about data and AI. So these things have already happened. AI has already proven its worth. So it's not like a, a Bitcoin thing, which was a brand new concept. And then people got into it uh, based on hype, but also more for speculation. Now, uh, you know, that's a totally separate conversation about Bitcoin and blockchain. But AI, I believe, is much, much more technology than, than uh, uh, blockchain or Bitcoin. So I believe it's not a hype anymore. It's actually real world applications, as I shared with you. And I can share more if you want uh, some of the inventions that um, myself and my company were involved in. Um, and AI is, yeah, uh, it, it has so many more applications um, for life and business and everything that we do. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, you know, when G Chat GPT first came out, there was just like kind of editing. And now you go on the YouTube podcast, you can see the diversity of things it's able to do. Um, one of the big, I'll talk about some of the, some of the main big points that people are afraid of AI is they say that AI is going to take over humanity, take all of our, all of our jobs, basically, you know, press a nuke button, kill us all. What are your thoughts? See, th these are two separate issues, so I will address them separately. One is about jobs. So I won't deny the fact that there will be some job displacement, right? But that happens every time a new technology, like a groundbreaking technology, is introduced, right? So a quick example could be, let's say, you know, before 1995, generally most people did not have email addresses, right? Nobody used email. And uh, uh, 10 years after that, like maybe even year 2000, if you ap applied for even an entry level job and you did not have email, then you won't get too far, right? So it's the same thing now where your job is not going to be taken away by AI, but somebody who understands AI and uses AI. So that's the, that's the only difference. AI is just a tool. Second thing about AI taking over humanity, I believe that is sort of the most common human instinct that we think, oh, whenever we gain power, our next step should be to eliminate other people, right? Or an eliminate another species. But if you look around in nature, there are millions and millions of species on this planet. There's only one species that wages organized war against each other, and that, that is humans. No other species does that. So I don't believe, like if, if we consider AI to be another species, uh, I don't think that is the first urge it is going to have to kill humanity. And I, again, I can go deeper into the technical reasons and, and all of those things, but, but I hope that that gives you some idea. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that. And I just basically talking to a lot of AI experts and, you know, such individuals such as yourself, it's like, um, if you don't know how to, it was like, basically, if you didn't know how to use social media, or if you didn't know how to use website, or if you don't know how to set up an internet store, um, mm -hmm. then you were SOL because Amazon, mm -hmm. you know, but um, so you had to learn how to use these tools and yeah. kind of that that's going to set the advantage. It's interesting how AI is going to create more industries and make other industries obsolete, but, um, you know, it's going to create more opportunities for people to have more control. So, absolutely. Uh, um, real quick, uh, cause I know we type, cause we have, um, you know, we're kind of we're coming towards the end, but you, in your bio, you talk about, um, so one thing is, uh, one thing is a uh, couple of things is, um, so you're talking about the biggest wealth transfer in history and how to take advantage of it. Just kind of yeah. elaborate what that is. All right. So, so see, um, if you look at some data and quotations, uh, the CEO of IBM has said that AI is going to add about $10 trillion to the world GDP. So that's a trillion with a T. Uh, the current world GDP is $96 trillion. Okay. So 
in less than seven years, 10% of the world GDP is going to be added by AI. All right, oh, and and uh, the CEO of uh, Google and Peter Diamond is the, the Peter Diamond is a sign, uh, you know, significant entrepreneur and scientist, and both of them they have said that by the end of 2030, there's only going to be two types of businesses: one which are using AI to the fullest, and another one who are out of business. Okay, so. That's how powerful this technology is. So that's uh, if if you look at the data, if you look at what is happening, uh, this is the biggest wo- uh, wealth transfer that is going to happen. Like bigger than in the internet, bigger than the smartphone. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I thought you had a pause there, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, uh, yeah. So yeah, that's really interesting. And talking about you know, I love this idea of this uh, wealth transfer because basically boomers are retiring. You have uh, you this aging financial infrastructure. You have you have technology, all of them's converging all at once in this huge, massive transfer of wealth. Um, so you want to be on the right side of it um, and get prepared for it. Um, the other thing is that that was talking about is this. Um, I love this idea. You you, you talk about the fa- <laughs> the fastest and sure shot way to become a millionaire. Of course, there's no one here wonders you know it, everything takes work but i'm just curious because that was in your bio yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> see so it's an interesting question because a lot of people uh ask that question and the first thing i say to people is like you know change the mindset of becoming a millionaire to a successful person because uh one thing is everybody's success is different right some people want to travel the world and that's success for them some people want to raise their kids and send them to college that's success for them so i tell people first of all figure out what do you want to feel like what is this what is the experience you want in your life and then work backward from there and that may need a million dollars may may not need a million dollars or may it may need 100 million who knows uh, so that's one thing second thing is that um uh, it's all about uh, you know what your genius is a lot of people what they do is they want success but they want to follow some other successful person's footsteps um which is okay you know taking inspiration from somebody else is okay but they generally say oh because somebody became rich being a surgeon i will also become a surgeon even though they may not be interested in becoming a surgeon right so the idea is to find what you are good at and there's a there's a framework in uh, in uh, there's a japanese framework called ikigai okay so ikigai means your purpose of living so you can use that framework to figure out what is your true genius and then you work consistently on that genius whether that is technology whether that is business or uh, you know medicine whatever that is uh, or it could be as weird as just weaving baskets underwater or, you know, like uh, raising monkeys in the middle of uh, a jungle, whatever that is, right? Um, and then uh, you you get to work and work consistently on that. And then the last thing I will say is make sure you focus a lot on human communication and building relationships. Because if you want to accomplish something big in your life, then you will need help. And so those relationships are what w- will help you achieve those goals. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Um, I love, I love because um, then the more I talk to people, the more it's like kind of like this narrative of um, like this uh, 50 year, then, you know, all this like kind of Disney world fairy tale is perpetuated by the media it tries to get us to like buy more. And it's like, I love your idea where this idea of success is like, it depends on you. It's like what you need, you know, what do you want to do in this world? It's not like everybody's definition is so different, mm-hmm, but, mm-hmm. but, uh, but we think success is only one thing, you know? So mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, one final question is how can you achieve exponential growth in your life and business? See, I, I, this is all related. So once you figure out what um, you are good at, once you find your Ikigai, when you start focusing on that and just focus on consistent, even if you say, okay, my goal for the next year will be to just improve myself 1% per day or even per week. So the law of compounding says that if you improve yourself 1% today, 
the next time you improve yourself 1%, it's not going to be 1% uh, 2% increase, but it, it'll be, you know, 1% above, like it, I, I can't do the math now, but it'll be compounding, right? And when you uh, get to the last day or the last week of the year, your compounding compounding effect will be like exponent, exponentially better than where you started, right? So the idea is you stay consistent and focus on improving yourself, uh, get help from people who can complement your skills. And um, that is the basic formula. Of course, I cannot go into the full depth of, you know, the, the whole framework that we use, but that those are the basic steps. Does that make sense? I, I love that. And I was just, I'm just curious to see if there was new insights because um, I'm always interested in exponential growth, network effects, and see what people say. Um, and then what's very interesting is you have um, what do meditation and AI and the power of your mind and AI to achieve your wildest dreams? What do all of they have in common? Sure. Yeah. See, um, a lot of what we experience in life or what we uh, the value we create uh, or the actions we take, they are pretty much controlled by our subconscious mind. Subconscious mind is quite powerful. In fact, like it controls 95% of our actions and thoughts. So meditation basically is a process to get your conscious mind to start observing your subconscious mind, your thoughts. Uh, and so that leads to a lot of um, results and success as we define it. Um, and so now if we look at artificial intelligence, it's a basically a continuum of our mind because the way that we interact with AI and the AI it interacts with our mind, it actually is a two-way street. Uh, I'll give you an example. So today, all major elections uh, are won or lost using platforms like Facebook and Instagram. And, and these platforms are nothing but AI algorithms, right? And even the headlines on the news um, sites that we read, they are all controlled by AI. So it is forming public opinion, right? And whatever data as a public we generate, AI consumes it to learn about the world. So it's it's like a continuous two-way street. Makes sense? Now, coming back to meditation, a lot of people, when I talk to people about meditation, they say, I don't have time or you know, my, my mind cannot be at rest, so I cannot meditate. So then I started thinking, okay, if we can use artificial intelligence to impact the mind in a way that can help people experience a meditative state. So then, uh, you know, we, we started working on that. But just to give you a sample of this, right, I'll give you a sample of this. Um, I, we call it like the magic wand uh, formula. So let's say if you want to achieve something in the next 30 days, okay, not something huge like your purpose in life, like your Ikigai, but something, let's say, you know, you want to sign a contract or you want to sign up a client or you want to go on a vacation with your family, something along those lines. So typically what happens is that people have a very vague idea of what they want to achieve, like this, this, this idea about going to vacation or signing a client. Sign up for a free chat GPT account and then ask chat GPT that, hey, um, my name is so and so. I do this and I live in New York. And, you know, uh, describe yourself and then say, you know, write me a detailed story about me going to a vacation to this particular place where you want to go. Describe in detail the experiences I had, the people I met, the foods uh, I tasted, all of that, right? Uh, and then read out that story and, and ask ChatGPT to write it in the past tense in the first person. So meaning as if this has already happened. And then read out that story to yourself continuously for the next, you know, uh, three, four weeks. And then whatever your mind experiences, that's meditation. That's that's the meditative effect. And then a lot of you, if you if you actually follow through and uh, do this exercise, you will start to see a lot of what the story said to, to come into your real experience in your real life. So that's what meditation is. Does that make sense? Yeah, I love that. Um, how can people contact you, follow you, uh, reach out to you, and uh, check you out? Check out your work. 
yeah just find me on linkedin uh, let me know that you heard me on this podcast and uh, how can i help uh, help you achieve your goals yeah. and for all the listeners out there let's thank um manuj for coming onto the show and really talking a lot about very interesting concepts and um distilling it and with that thanks so much for coming onto the podcast thank you so much Bye.